Hello, everybody. Pleasure to be here. When I was a kid, I was having the chance to dive in the Red Sea, see these magnificent colors, and be inspired by that to become a marine biologist. In the end, I ended up to become a roboticist, but it rhymes. However, just recently, I brought my dear kids to the same place and wanted them to also be inspired by this magnificent nature. And I think it's clear that things have gone south over the last only two decades. And this is something that truly worries me and made me really think, how can I help as an AI robotics researcher to, you know, help a little bit at least and make this place, uh, this world a better place. Obviously, this is just one of many things that are going south at the moment. We have many, many problems on global scale, planetary, global environmental challenges that we are facing. And obviously, there's a lot to be done. What is truly inspiring, I think, is that we can see many people fighting fights on various levels. We can see the ocean cleanup, we can see healthy seas. So many people are giving their lives to make this world better, to clean up behind the mess we are leaving behind as mankind. At the same time, there seems to be a tremendous problem with that. We should ask one question. We are about 8 billion people. Do our efforts actually match the scale of the problem we're facing or not? If not, what can we do? <coughs> if we think about the 8 billion people would stand shoulder to shoulder, it's kind of interesting that the whole area we cover all together is about Luxembourg. So there seems to be a tremendous gap between what we are able to do with our hands, with our bodies, and the challenge we are actually facing. So we need to be reinforced. And how can we do that? So obviously, as a robotics and AI researcher, I'm asking myself, what can we do? What can we do to help us to really close that gap and magnify, accelerate, and amplify the reach we have as humans? So how can we use artificial intelligence, robotics technologies, and machines generally to scale our efforts, to be empowered by these machines, to be augmented, and how can we really do that? This has been something we've been driven for many years, and I want to share some thoughts about that with you today. I call this the robot guardians. I call this mission the artificial immune system of the planet, because I truly believe in technology. I truly believe that we as mankind need technology to solve these global planetary scale challenges, because we alone are just too few, and we don't have the reach that is required for that. Big mission. I don't want to see a future where Wally is left alone, the last one, the last robot standing, cleaning up, and we have to search for another planet. So the fundamental question we have been asking: what can we do today? How can we use the many machines, the many robots, the lots of infrastructures we have at our disposal that are being built today, that have been built and that will be built? Yeah. And how can we use them to protect our environment? How can we really make use of these vast transformations we have been pushing the last 50, 60 years? And how can we use the tremendous efforts we have been doing in machine learning, communication technologies, robotics, to connect us humans, augment us by what we call AI-empowered telepresence? Telepresence is a word that essentially means how to create physical avatars. How does this work? How can we create machines that augment us, that are kind of the Mr. Fantastic in reality? So if you think of two examples, I want to show you how telepresence have given us capabilities we have never dreamt of as humans. Think of two barriers, the barrier of distance and the barrier of scale, size. We can use, for example, robots to explore Mars so we can cross distances of millions of uh, kilometers we can control robots to follow the missions of exploration. But at the same time, we can also use robots with the vast approaches in communication and AI technologies to be little helpers to bring the surgeon into the smallest scale of the human body without needing to do invasive um, surgery procedures. 
So this kind of transformative technologies have shown how robotics and AI can augment our abilities. Obviously, telepresence, so the avatar in physical spaces, the metaverse of physics, you could say, is still at the beginning. And we have a fundamental barrier to cross. So from classic telepresence to rifting is what I call that. Classical telepresence, as we see it today, and many of the robots you see here have been developed by us, is basically used as expert technology, high cost experts only. So we need to democratize this technology. We need to create a web of humans and machines being connected, interconnected, augmented, instantaneously, ad hoc, reconfigurable according to the problem at hand. We call this CORIFT, Collaborative Robotic Interface for Telepresence. Kind of a bubble fish between us humans and the vast machines we see all over the planet. And we need to make this accessible at low cost, but also zero cost interfaces. So technologies we carry around in our pockets. So it needs to be very accessible to be able to interact with these machines to basically magnify the M humans with N robots or vice versa. If we think about that, how can we do that? And what is really needed to do that? We have all the many robots today, thousands, hundreds of thousands of robots. We have many machines and infrastructures. And this co-rift truly needs to be the bubble fish between the machine world and the human world to create a symbiotic world in which we all can collaborate seamlessly with each other across time and space, you could say. This multi-system telepresence will be the augmentation of human capabilities to do the things we cannot do alone and that we humans cannot do only together. But we need technology to truly be augmented. What is kind of interesting about that is that we are prepared for it. It's not something that is purely in the future. We are connected by the World Wide Web as of today, standard technology. And we can interface, we can exchange information, knowledge. And now let's think we could have environmental tickets being issued somewhere around the planet. Let's take Lake uh, Kochel around here in Bavaria, beautiful lake as an example. And let's say there is an environmental challenge being posed, was identified. Obviously now we need to basically embed the co-rift layer that brings us from the digital world of the web back to the physical world by the rift gateways. We call this rifting. Humans can basically connect via the web, rift via co-rift into the physical world, meaning to connect to real physical machines. So in this particular example, let's say this van, the synchronous robot team van is the right infrastructure at place that we could occupy. We could basically select because that's the system we need to solve the particular environmental challenge that was ticketed here. We might need specialists from all over the world, a toxicologist, a biologist. We could ask them to also rift into this specific situation at hand, at the emergency that might happen thousands or 10,000 of kilometers away. So we can really now bring people together, collaborate instantaneously, not only in the digital world, but in the physical realm. So let me give you an example. Let's rift with the example of the SVAN, again, the synchronous robot team van with its robot guardians. So for example, here we can see Lake Kochel at a cloudy uh, day. We have the autonomous van driving to the uh, site at hand, having been uh, called, being equipped with communication interfaces, all kinds of robots inside, obviously swimming, flying, and driving. So autonomous deployment of the drone to do the scout, to understand what's going on in the environment. The water guardian being able to do environmental protection underwater, isolating sites, and the land guardian to be able to clean up, augmented by artificial intelligence to automatically, autonomously, for example, see waste, potentially also toxic waste, isolating that, detecting it, calling the toxicologist in so that the specialist can basically weigh in and advise the robots what to do. Anna, as we see here, is rifting into the Sven system and tells the land guardian what to do with that particular incident. In this case, as we will see, she says, that's not a problem, I think that's simply to be disposed. However, we should be cautious. We should not just leave it like that, but we should um, use the heterogeneous robot team to do a scouting. So let's take the, the land uh, guardian, do the uh, measurement of the water quality. Something might indicate that we need to basically surveil the entire environment. So we will then use the um, water guardian to mark the pollution sites so that the second team could come in and we do the cleanup. This technology basically then 
generates the data being then deployed into a digital twin environment so that this kind of information can be used on a global scale. So we could actually have access to this data in real time being used and on other sites all over the world that could now be obviously Lake Como, for example, or Lake Tahoe in California. So I think this kind of technology shows you as a kind of one example of a potential global Swiss army knife, how we could use robotics and AI technology to augment and to be able to do these things almost in real time. So, but let me do a small thought experiment with you. This was just one example. But what happens here really? What happens if we don't have just a few humans, a few robots, but a full-scale system, let's say 100 robots with 1,000 robots guardians scaled up by this core of technology? There's something very interesting happening because it's not only the power of interaction and networking, but it's the power of collaboration across humans and machines. So symbiotic collaboration that brings us a new effect. It will augment tremendously the capabilities of humans, as I will show you in a second. So if you just simply connect one human and one robot, it's kind of obvious that what we will gain here is just linear, right? So the more humans are connected with avatar modes, with robots, we simply scale linearly. So meaning we have a rift index, as we call it, of M, the numbers of humans. But now if we connect one human to many robots, we actually multiply the number of robot capabilities of N with the numbers of human capabilities of M which gives us an exponential rift index, you could say. However, if we now let the robots collaborate even with each other, this is what we call the collective intelligence of these systems. So the teams of robots with their network effect, with the ability to collaborate, will give us an exponential rise in capabilities and the required scaling that I was mentioning in the beginning. So only by collaborating humans and collaborating machines, we will be able to really scale on terms of capabilities to solve these huge problems that we're seeing ahead. Me just giving you one example in that particular realm. I think it's clear that this kind of technology can be transformative. And I would love to think that we are able to envision a scale in which we can really and truly create an artificial immune system for our planet. But I think there are many things ahead of us that need to be overcome. Obviously, our infrastructure is not there yet. We're not fully connected. We don't have yet all the systems in place that we need from the fundamental capability levels, but we're on a good level. We see the tremendous advances in communication, in artificial intelligence, but also in robotics to not only do the diagnostics, but the intervention. And I think it's clear we need to scale up in fundamental infrastructure, but we also need something that is extremely important in our world to be successful, to execute the things. We need an economic ecosystem around environmental protection. So I would like to invite you to co-rift with us into the future in which we equip our really, really to be protected Mother Earth with an artificial immune system empowered by the transformative power of robotics and artificial intelligence. Thank you very much.